Welcome back to Kitchen Cures, where we're getting ready to make one of my favorite winter dishes, chili. I love chili. It can take on the personality of anyone that makes it. But today, I have with me here at Perch, Chef Joe, who is making one of my favorite versions of chili. Welcome, Chef Joe. Thank you guys for having me. Thanks for joining me and helping me make one of my favorite dishes. So talk to us about chili and kind of where do you begin? I think for me, I didn't make chili for a long time because it just felt too intimidating. It felt like there were too many ingredients and too many pots and pans. Talk us through it, make it simple for us. Oh, chili is simple all on its own, honestly. Um, you would have some type of meat first and you would brown that off. Um, so today we have ground turkey. And you know, he's, we're choosing to use ground turkey, which I like to use, it's a leaner meat. And one of the things, if you've been following the news lately, we've really learned is that you have to be picky about your meat quality. Originally, chili was made with ground beef, am I correct? Right. But what we're learning is that you know, ground turkey is leaner, it doesn't have quite as much fat, and we really wanna pick an organic meat that doesn't have the antibiotic load, because what we're finding is that that antibiotic load in meats also affects our children. So we chose ground turkey, but remember, for those of you that are vegetarian or vegan, you can modify this. You can use tofu instead, Absolutely. and I know you've seen those recipes as well. Yes. So with that, so we have the ground turkey. We'll also be using two different types of beans. So we have a, red, a dark red kidney bean and a light red kidney bean. And I love beans as well, and we've talked about this before, but beans, remember, serve lots of different roles. First of all, the darker, the richer the bean, you've got more antioxidants. And remember, beans have a lot of fiber in it, so it keeps you full for hours, not wanting you to snack on all those holiday treats or hit the pantry for things that may not be as healthy for you. <laughs> so we also have fresh tomatoes, and we'll be using the tomato paste, trying to give that tomato color and the flavor. Do you have a preference between fresh or the paste? I know, again, it's a convenience thing for a lot of people. It's easier to grab the can and open it up and dump it versus cutting that stuff up fresh. Does one make a better chili than the other? I would say mix them both if you can. Okay. Um, the paste, you won't have that the chunkiness of the tomatoes. So if you can use both, go ahead. You can use canned tomatoes. If that's just not quite the same. So again, the reason I love chili so much, remember I'm a mom and I have children and w I'm always trying to sneak in those vegetables somehow. So you can chop up tomatoes, you can chop up different greens, you can chop up carrots. The kids get so confused by all the Absolutely. ingredients in there that they have no idea that they're eating vegetables. So it's a lot of fun. So I like fresh, usually fresh produce and I'll mix a little bit of paste in there occasionally just to give it more of the texture. Yeah, if you're gonna hide a vegetable in something, chili is where you Chili's a great way to do it. <laughs> Okay, Chef Joe, you've gone through the basic ingredients of my favorite chili, so talk to us about what's next. Okay, so first over here we have our ground turkey browning. So we used a little bit of olive oil first, and then we threw the ground turkey in there. And I think that's interesting that you chose olive oil because one of the things people get very confused about is what oil do we use with cooking? Olive oil, remember, typically has a low set point. But what I saw that you did, he picked an olive oil that has a little bit of a higher heat point so that it will work for browning meat. Is that kind of how you typically choose the oils? Or? Exactly. So this one that we actually use, uh, virgin olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, it's not that low of a smoke point, and you can actually look on the back of the bottle of your olive oil, and they should have the different smoke points for you. And this is something I didn't know. I learned this from Chef Joe. And the reason that's important is because if you use the wrong oil and you use the oil at a high heat that's not meant for that, then you can produce a lot of free radicals, and that oil actually loses all its healing benefits and can actually be toxic for you. So it is important to look for that and try to understand what oil to use. Yep. All right, so you're browning your turkey. Let's see what you have to do. Do you usually use a little bit of vinegar to kind of mix it in there or tell me the role of vinegar there. Right, so the vinegar, it's, it gives a little bit of flavor. We're also deglazing the pan. Okay. So once we're browning, there are a little bit of bits that are kind of stuck to the bottom. That's where all the flavor is. So you want to keep those bits and so pour that in. the flavor is at the bottom. I didn't know that. So see, I'm learning something new every day. Okay, so you've got your vinegar in there and you're yep. mixing that. And you're going to kind of have to scrape the bottom. So with that heat, you want to keep it, the heat on there, scrape the bottom. Now we're getting all the bits off the bottom of that. Okay, and then adding spices, you told me, was the next step, correct? Exactly. Yep. And here again, this is where it takes a twist that I love because you can get creative with this. But for me, these are some of my favorite spices, and let's talk through them. We have garam masala, which is an Indian spice blend. Garam literally means hot. And depending on which one you buy, they're all different. But typically, they'll have like coriander, fennel, black pepper, turmeric, you know, anise, and they'll grind all that together and make a beautiful smelling spice blend. Uh, we have Himalayan salt or sea salt. You can use either one. Cinnamon, which helps to regulate blood sugar levels. 
cayenne pepper, which serves multiple purposes. Now in the winter, a lot of us like to eat a little bit more. We want those comfort foods, but cayenne pepper serves as an appetite suppressant and it also boosts your immune system. I don't know if you knew that or not. And then we have nutmeg and nutmeg, remember, has a compound called eugenol in it and it's important for you and it's in a lot of our holiday recipes, but it's important because it's an antibacterial property. So again, this is sick season. We're getting cold a lot. I was just complaining that I felt like I had something, but these spices really help to boost your immune system. And last but not least is probably the ultimate, the potent immune booster, which is garlic. We've got dried minced garlic here. You can use dried garlic. You can use fresh garlic, your choice, depending on your time. But this makes a great blend of spices for the perfect spicy chili, which I now trust to you. <laughs> so. Now, if you were going to use fresh garlic, you would add that right before you add the turkey. Okay. Get that browning a little bit, pull out all that flavor, and then quickly throw the turkey in there before it um, darkens too much. Okay. But at this point, it's dry, so we need all the liquids we can to get so that So raw back. goes first, dry goes second. Exactly. Right? Quick rule to remember. So we've got all our right. spices in there. We're getting those ready to brown up. What's next? So right now we're just gonna mix all the spices in here. Okay. Everything's pretty much mixed up. Now, if you wanted to use a crock pot, which we're gonna use a crock pot today, you can. Um, if you didn't have a crock pot or couldn't use a crock pot, we have something similar to a Dutch oven, um, or you can just use one big pot. Just keep it in there, keep it on the simmer, and that just let it go. So but the Dutch oven would stay on the stove. Right, okay. Dutch oven would stay right okay. on the stove. Gotcha. But for this, we're going to use the crock pot. So I'm going to take the meat that I just browned and okay. we're going to walk go to over the crock pot now. to our crock pot, which is sitting over here. So okay, again, I'm going to ask the mom question. The mom question is, what's faster and what's easier? <laughs> what's the quickest way to get to this point? So the quickest way would uh -huh. stay on the stove. Really? The easiest way would crock pot. Ah. Crock so pot, you just throw easy. everything in there. Hmm. Right now, I'm going to toss everything in there now. Okay. It smells great already. So we've got, got our meat in there, and then you use this tomato paste, you said, correct? Tell, yes. That goes in next yep. as a second ingredient. Can I stick that in there? Oh, absolutely. I can't mess it up, right? You so, can't. All right, good point. deal. So we have our beans now. Okay. So you've got the... So I have the light, you have the dark. All right. Mix those in there. And you can, again, get creative with this. You don't have to absolutely. use the ones we chose. You can use black beans. You can use white beans. You can use all kinds of different beans. Right. And then we're going to put the fresh tomatoes, which also help. Um, we're going to get those juices out of the tomatoes during our simmering process. Okay. And then a cup of water. Cup of water is next. Okay, just pour directly yep, in. Pour right. right in there. Awesome. So we're going to stir everything together. Okay. Anything that, else we have to add to this mixture? This is, this That's is it. That's it? Okay. This is actually it. Fantastic. And then how long? So you do long? want to mix it so you get that paste mixed in there because, I mean, it is a paste. So you want to mix that all in together. And at that point... And you don't have to add more spices at this point. You don't at have to add point. anything more. Absolutely. So I know you guys might not be able to see this, but the paste is now evenly distributed through the meat. It looks perfectly even and smooth. Stick a cover yep. on. Put the cover on. Okay. Going to lock this down here. And we're going to set it on low. And set it on low for about, honestly, you can leave. That's what crock pots are for, is you go to work and come back. By the time you come back home from work, it is good. It has all those spices blended in well. Now, if you're going to do it over on the stovetop, you would kind of, it's best to have it the day after. It's, okay. it's really good the day after, but you, it is edible same day. So what do you think? Eight hours, 12 hours, 24 hours in the About crock six, pot? Six, eight hours. Six to eight hours. Stove, how long on a stovetop? Stovetop, everything comes together in about 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Everything's cooked down, but to get the best flavor, overnight's the best. Overnight's the best. Exactly. I want to try it. All right, here we go. <laughs> I get to try this now. So we have some here. Okay, looks great. So this is pre, we made this ahead of time. Just so you guys can see what this looks like. It smells amazing, it smells wonderful. And this is a pretty thick well. chili, so if you didn't want it as thick, again, you can add a little more water. And thin it down. For, exactly, so okay. thin it down. And then I'll garnish it here. And that is a little bit of parsley. All right. There we go. Mmm, smells wonderful, guys. So hopefully you'll get to make this at home this winter. Remember, it has tons of great health benefits, everything from the spices to the fiber to the protein to keep you full and healthy this winter season. Thanks for watching this edition of Kitchen Cures. I'm Dr. Taz with Chef Joe.